Good afternoon and welcome to the Asian Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is Kelvin Wong, market strategist at CMC Markets. Kelvin, thanks for coming in. Hey, hi, Brian. Good to see you again. Now, Kelvin, before we get your insights, I'm going to take a look at crypto markets first. Uh, Bitcoin is at 45,648. It's up 0.06%. Ethereum is at 3,180.17. It is up 0.47%. Now, obviously, both of those have had a steady run up over the last two weeks. And in fact, Ethereum is up more than 50%. Now, if you look at regional markets, let's start close to home. We start with the SGX, uh, which is at 3,191. It's up 0.35%. Versa Malaysia is at 1,501.91. It's down 0.17%. Uh, across the region, if we look at the Nikkei, the Nikkei is at 28,053. It's down 0.06%. Shanghai Composite is 3,528.27. is down 0.12%. The Hang Seng is also down 0.09% at 26,636.92. The ASX 200 is down 0.05% at 7,581.50. Rounding up the numbers, we got the Kospi also down 0.28% at 3,211.61. Markets are mostly down, Kelvin. Why is that? Okay, because if we look at the current situation in the markets right now, so uh, despite a very strong uh, performance in the overnight US stock market, where we see the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones hitting fresh record highs, so what we could actually explain um, it. This lack of follow through in the ASEAN uh, benchmark stock indices is primarily driven by uh, pretty much concern over at the China regulatory standpoint of view. So if you notice that late uh, yesterday, uh, around, around evening time, Asia time, the State Council actually issued a new five-year plan that actually targeted on new regulation or more stringent regulation across all sectors of the Chinese economy. That means we're talking about ranging from all business classes, even though the recent clampdown has been uh, seen on the technology sector, but right now it seems to be targeting even the old economy uh, industry as well. So the main aim of this regulatory, um, what is it, blueprint, pardon me, or this approach that China is taking, it seems to be getting more nationalistic in appeal rather than best best uh, business practices because uh, the aim of this uh, regulatory clampdown is to actually narrow the, uh, the the wealth gap between the very rich, the middle class and the, the bottom of the table. So uh, all this actually boils down uh, to what I call uh, presidency in trying to actually secure another five-year term as, 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 as China president. So it seems to me that uh, uh, investors are pretty concerned about this uh, uh, ongoing regulation that uh, has taken a, what we call a, a, an arc of a more of a nationalistic feel rather than from a best business practices approach. Okay. So, Kelvin, I want to ask you, uh, in terms of yesterday's uh, US uh, CPI numbers, how does mm. the market view this and how has that impacted the US dollar versus Asian currencies? So very interestingly, right, let's let's talk about the uh, performance of the US dollar since last Friday, where we start to see a very strong uh, non-farm payroll US data print, where yeah, I bring so the dollar that was, up that to. That print was almost. Uh, that was about nine hundred and thirty-five thousand. Right? Yes. 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 By yes. Almost hundred thousand. In terms yes. Of the so that. Yes, that's very, very, it's a very strong print. So that actually drives up the expectation of uh, the Fed uh, increases the chances of to start tempering by before this year end. Uh. So that's actually uh, supporting the dollar. But what we could see right now right, is this CPI number yesterday seems to be rather moderated or muted. Uh, so if you look at the month on month change, right, and look at the total CPI is 0.5% month on month. So it's actually went down slightly below 0.9% month on month recorded in June. So that's actually a slowdown in inflationary pressure. Then if you minus off the X food and energy, that's the core CPI, it's actually uh, increased 0.3%. So that is also slightly uh, slightly down as well, uh, in fact, below consensus of 0.4%. So all in all, right, what we could see right now is it uh, seems to me that uh, the current CPI numbers or inflation rate data in US is actually indicating a slowdown in inflation. So what it means, uh, it means that initially Fed Chair Powell uh, narrative about inflation seems to be more temporary or transitory due to low base effect. So this probably not right now is actually gaining picture into the marketplace right now, where we start to see a kind of dollar weakness yesterday. So in fact, the dollar weakness came in after 
close to three consecutive uh, daily session of gains. And what's interesting about this dollar is the US dollar actually fall right at a key medium term resistance level, which is at 93.44 slash 92.90. So what we could see right now is another potential drop within this, uh, I would say that this very uh, uh, choppy three months kind of a range, rangy formation that's in place since the middle of this year. Okay, and obviously then that is going to have a, a positive impact for Asian currencies vis-a-vis -vis the US dollar. Uh, possibly, yeah, because now Asia currency, right, the problem with Asia currency right now is actually a tug of war between the bulls and the bears. Uh, yes, definitely, we're talking about uh, with US numbers getting, inflationary numbers getting weaker, where actually the, the Fed uh, may not be so hustled, you know, or so, so quick in, in doing this QE tempering. That's actually positive for ASEAN currency. But on the other hand, what we see in ASEAN right now, especially the Southeast Asia region, we now start to see a spike in this COVID-19 uh, Delta variant. So that's actually a concern uh, regarding about uh, ASEAN economy growth. So that's actually a negative impact on this ASEAN currency as well. So what we could see right now going forward in a couple of months, right, we talk about one to three months approach, I do believe that uh, we more, we're more facing a range bound situation for ASEAN currency due to, do, due to these two conflicting factors at play. Okay, let's look, uh, swing around to commodities and the mover has been gold. On Sunday evening, gold fell to a four month low of 1,677 per ounce. But in the last mm. two days, it's been, it's recovered. What's your view on the prices of oil, uh, prices of gold moving forward? Okay, so what's what's interesting about the gold? Let's de let's decipher it step by step. First, is uh, number one definitely there's a fresh crash about close to about five percent from last Friday's U.S. session close to hit. Uh, to a low, you talk about the gold futures, uh, depending on which uh, broker that you use, it's about 1677, 1675, uh, this particular range. Uh. So uh, what's interesting over here, it actually happened right at the early start of the ASEAN trading hours. That means we're talking about close to about uh, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., that mark. So what happened at the, during that point in time is there was actually closure of two major financial ASEAN financial centers, which is Singapore and Japan, which is due for their uh, our respective holiday public holidays holiday. in these yeah. two countries, yes. So what we could see over here is that it could be potentially, uh, we call it, uh, whether it's a fat finger or cheeky fingers to try to actually push down the prices of gold during this low liquidity environment. And what interesting is that during this period of time, right, there is no inter-market asset class correlation that actually support this fresh crash in gold. We don't see a spike up in the, the, the dollar index. We don't see a sell-off in, in you know, the, the S&P E-mini or, or uh, uh, other uh, major Asian stock market indices. So what's interesting over here is that uh, after this fresh crash, uh, in the last one to two days, we start to see a remarkable recovery I mean, going uh, uh, heading in heading into yesterday's U.S. session, okay, uh, which actually closed positive at uh, one point two five percent. That is uh, at seventeen fifty three. So that's almost uh, erase off the Monday's uh, fresh crash loss. So and what's interesting is that that rebound, uh, this two days of rebound actually came right at the test of a key long term support level for gold, which is at sixteen seventy slash sixteen forty. So going forward, right in terms of sentiment wise, it seems to be positive. That's supporting gold price and. Also, if you look at the last uh, last night US uh, CPI print, which is also pretty much muted. So we are talking about this peak inflation narrative coming in, uh, where US uh, uh, Fed will, will be not so in a hurry of tightening liquidity. So that could be actually another positive driver for gold as well. So uh, from a medium term perspective, right, we're talking about uh, one to three weeks. Uh, the next resistance I'm watching for gold will be at 1790 uh, slash 1810. All right, Kelvin, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Great. Uh, thank you, Brian. Now, we've been speaking to Kelvin Wong, market strategist at CFC Markets on Vistex, Asian Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. Check out our LinkedIn and Facebook pages as well as our website, www.vistex.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thanks a lot for tuning in.